Hey guys, Harsh here and welcome back to Technolobe. Now today we are doing a very different video and this is the first time that I'm making a PC build video. So yes, we've got our components over here and you know, this is going to be a budget PC build. It's not going to be a high end PC build. I want to start with a budget office use PC and then move up to the high end PCs, you know, high end gaming PCs. So yeah, this is going to be under 30,000 rupees. It's mainly for office use and some light gaming. Let's see how it goes. It's my first ever PC build on camera. Off camera, I've done like a lot of PC builds, but this is my first one on camera. So I'm really excited and let's see how it goes. First up, let's go ahead and talk about the components that I've chosen for this build. If we talk about the CPU, it's the Intel Core i3 12th generation processor. The exact model number is 1200F. It comes with 4 cores and 8 threads and this is a very good CPU. Intel has done a good job with their 12th generation series. That's why I went with the Core i3 12th generation that is 1200F. Now this is only a CPU, it does not come with integrated graphics. So this is not an APU. That's why I had to go with a graphics card as well. And for the graphics, I've chosen a very basic graphic card. So this is the GeForce GT730. It's by ASUS and this is a very basic graphics card because this is a very basic computer That's why I went with this one. I did not want to spend a lot on the graphics card. So yeah, this is CPU plus GPU Next up we have 8 GB of crucial RAM. This is DDR4 RAM very standard 8 GB should be there And that's why I went with 8 GB Apart from that, we also have a 256GB SSD. Now this is an M.2 SSD, that is NVMe SSD. It's very fast, very reliable, and that's why I went ahead with it. Now I did not pair this with an HDD, I only want an SSD because I want the best performance out there. Finally, if we talk about the motherboard, this is the ASUS Prime H610M. Now this is a very good motherboard. It supports the 12th generation processors, it's Windows 11 ready, and it's a very reliable and affordable motherboard. Apart from that, if we talk about the case over here, here, this is a very basic case from Intex. It also comes with the power unit that is the SMPS pre-installed and you know it's very very affordable. It's compact, it's small and that's why I chose this case. Now let's go ahead and build this PC. First up I'm going to assemble everything on the motherboard and then I will connect the motherboard inside this cabinet. So yeah let's go ahead and open up the motherboard first. All right here we go. Careful with the motherboard. It looks amazing, doesn't it? <laughs> now here's where we are supposed to put the CPU, here's where the RAM goes, and there are a bunch of other slots for other things. I will take you through each and every slot, but first up, we will go ahead and install the CPU because you know that's the main thing. So the CPU of choice is Core i3 1200F. Now this one comes with the CPU and the fan, so that is a good thing. You have to install the CPU, and then on top of that, you have to install the fan. I'm going to go ahead and open it up and let's see how it goes. So this is the CPU unit. It's very small, but it's very expensive and very important as well. This is the main brain of the computer. So this is the main CPU unit and inside we also get a cooler, basically a fan for the CPU because again, this is very important. Now you have to be careful with this. You know why? Because there is thermal paste over here and you should not touch it. You should not, you know, damage it. The thermal paste is very important. This gray color over here is the thermal paste. All right, so I'm just going to keep it upside down now because I don't want to, you know, touch the thermal paste. Now gently and slowly we'll open up the CPU. We get it out with our hands. Now you can see that there is a small triangle over here. You'll find a similar triangle on the motherboard as well. And that's where you have to align the CPU. So there's only one way it can go properly. It's not like you can put it anyhow. It goes only one way. And please make sure that you align the triangle. It's very important. Now, as you can see, we have installed the processor. We'll close the lid. Now this part will automatically come off when the processor is in place. Now next step is to install this fan. This is again a very important part. You just have to install this fan on top of the processor. And as you can see, there will be you know four slots to install the fan. There are these four holes over here. And inside these four holes, you can place these screws. You have to gently align the fan, press them in one by one. As you can see, the fan has also been installed on top of the processor. Now this is a fan cable. You have to connect it to the motherboard and you will find a little indicator which will say that CPU fan and it's right over here. As you can see, it's written CPU fan over here and that's where you have to connect this plug. 
so basically now we are done with the processor part of it the next step is to install the ram on the motherboard we have this 8 gb ram stick over here and i'm going to install this ram stick on the motherboard so this is our crucial 8 gb ram stick let's go ahead and quickly install it on the motherboard you can see that there are two ram slots over here so basically if you want 16 gb of ram you can go with two 8 gb sticks if you want 32 gb of ram you can go with two 16 gb sticks but right now i'm just going to go with one 8 gb and if in the future if this 8 gb is not enough i will go with another 8 gb and that will give me 16 gb of memory all right so the ram stick is also in place now next we're going to install the ssd on the motherboard as well so we have this 256 gb m2 ssd and let's go ahead and install that on the motherboard so this is our ssd it's very small but it's very fast so do not underestimate this by the size of it you know size does not matter <laughs> anyway <laughs> Now if we come, this is the you know M.2 SSD slot. I'm just gonna quickly place it over here like this. It's like a small SD card. And then we have to put a screw over here. You do get the screws, you know, inside the motherboard box itself, so that is excellent. You just have to open them up and you know install your SSD. And done, the SSD is in place. So that is our very fast and very reliable storage. All right, so we've installed the CPU, RAM and SSD. Now we are going to install the motherboard inside the case and then we are going to install the graphics card. Graphics card should be installed later on. That's what I think. That's what I have been doing. And yeah, that's what we are going to do today as well. So let's install the motherboard inside the case first and then the graphics card. So as you can see, this is the inside of the case. You get the power cable first. This is very important. This is the power unit. Now this is a very basic power unit because this is a very basic PC. If you go with a high-end PC, you will need a high-end power unit as well. And inside the case, you will also get this very important, you know, screw packet. You do not want to lose this because you are going to need screws to mount everything inside the case. This is very, very important. All right, now I'm going to keep the case like this over here. So as you can see inside the case, there are already four standoff screws over here. And these four screws are for the motherboard. You'll find similar screws on the motherboard as well. And you just need to you know, place the motherboard inside, tighten the screws and you'll be good to go. All right, there's one thing that I forgot to do is place the IO shield on the back of the case over here. So you can see that this part is empty. That's where this IO shield goes. Let me quickly put that first. All right, as you can see, the IO shield is placed over here. This is a very important part because all the IO over here will match to this IO shield. All right, so we've placed the motherboard inside and we've also you know, tightened the screws. So the motherboard is in place and it's good to go. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is install the graphics card on the motherboard, GeForce GT730. It comes with two GB of video memory. Let's go ahead and open up this box and install the graphics card on the motherboard. All right, so this is the graphics card. Looks really cool, doesn't it? Now it will directly go into this slot over here. So this is the graphics card slot. You just have to push it in and it will you know, go in place. All right, as you can see, the graphics card has also been installed over here. It was a very seamless process. And on the back, you can see that you also get some new ports with the graphics card. You get the HDMI port, the display port, and the VGA port as well. All right, so essentially we have connected all the parts. Now it's time to connect everything to the power unit and connect all the parts to the motherboard as well. So there are a bunch of ports on the, you know, uh, case over here. All these ports have to be connected to the motherboard and a bunch of other wiring. So I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly do that. And, you know, I will take you along in that process. First up, let's do the you know wiring of the case and the motherboard because that is important. You can see that there are a lot of pins over here and all these pins serve a purpose. For example, this one is the power switch. You have the reset switch. You have the power LED and a bunch of other things. And these are the you know, USB ports, the audio port. All these have to be connected to the motherboard. And on the motherboard, you have individual pins you know, for every single thing. So let's go ahead and connect them. All right, so we have set up everything and just before we close everything up and do a little bit of cable management, we want to see that if everything is working properly. So that's why I've connected the power cable over here and let's hope it works. If it works, the CPU fan should start moving and let's see if it does. So with power button, it's right over here. Moment of truth. 
and here we go it is working first try literally first try it's working this is like the best feeling ever now we are going to close everything up do a little bit of cable management and then we'll connect this pc to this monitor over here and install our windows operating system So we have connected everything. We have the CPU down over here. We have connected the CPU to this monitor. Let's go ahead and switch it on. <laughs> All right, as you can see, we have a display over here. It says the Asus Prime H610ME. That's the motherboard. We have the 12th gen Intel Core i3 12100F processor. Then we have 8 GB of RAM. The SSD is there. The keyboard and mouse is detected. Basically, everything is being detected and the PC is working. Now the next thing to do is install Windows and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to install Windows 10 Pro because we do not like 11 Pro as of yet. Windows 10 Pro is still better. So yeah, that's what we're going to do and we'll see you after that. All right, welcome back. So it's been 10 days since we built this PC. So for the past 10 days, I have been using and testing out this PC. And I think that this is the right time to tell you everything about it. First up, let's answer the question, why did I go with these components? As I said, this PC is going to be used for office purposes. So Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, a little bit of cloud-based applications like Zoho Books, some tally here and there. And for that purpose, this PC is, you know, more than enough in terms of performance. Now you guys don't have to buy these exact components. For example, if you want a little bit more graphics performance for some light gaming then you can go with a second hand gpu which is better than this one so yeah, that's a pretty neat trick you can go for a second hand gpu and you do get very good deals on them but anyway let's talk about the performance of this pc first up day-to-day -day performance is excellent the core i3 12th generation works like a charm intel has done a very good job with the 12th generation processors so normal day-to-day -day applications work very smooth on this pc also fast ssd storage and fast ram add to that so everything combined works really Really well in terms of day-to-day -day applications. Now I also tried a little bit of photo editing on this PC using Lightroom and the experience was really good. It was very smooth. I did not notice any major hiccups whatsoever. So you can easily edit photos on Lightroom. I also tried editing videos using Premiere Pro and the experience was okay. -ish. I would say you can easily edit small projects on this PC. So small 1080p projects, you can easily edit those on this PC. If you want to edit high-end 4K videos, then that is obviously not possible because it has its limitations. Now, if we talk about the benchmarks, I ran Geekbench first, here's the result. I also ran Cinebench, here's the result on your screen. And finally, Crystal Disk for the SSD speed. Now, what about gaming? Can you game on this PC? Well, you can do some light gaming on this PC if you're bored on a Sunday. So if you want to play some light titles for a couple of hours, then you can definitely do so on this PC. It is capable for that. But if you want to do proper gaming on this PC, then that is not possible. This is not a dedicated gaming PC. It will become a dedicated gaming PC if you upgrade the graphics card. So if you can extend your budget till 40,000, then you can go with a way better graphics card and then you can play heavier titles as well. The other question that a lot of people ask is about coding. Can you code on this machine? Yes, definitely you can code on this machine and for coding it's a very good machine. In fact, instead of Windows, you can install Ubuntu and in Ubuntu you can do a lot of coding stuff. So for those purposes, this PC is very good. If you are a coder out there, then you might have a good experience in terms of software development. All in all, I would say under 30,000, this is a very good build. Now don't worry, I will drop a list of all the components and their links as well in the description box below. If you want to buy them online, then you can definitely do so. Now, this was my very first PC build video. So your feedback is of prime importance. Let us know what we can improve in these videos. What else can we add? Your feedback is very, very important. So yeah, the comment section is open for you. Also, if you have any tech questions, then you can directly WhatsApp us on this number. We have started this new thing called as Technolope Support, where you can directly WhatsApp us with your tech queries and you will get a personalized answer. So anyway, that's where it. this was a very cool PC build under 30,000 rupees. Do let me know how you feel about this video in the comment section down below. If you like this content, hit that like button and if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel it would mean the world to me my name is Hush Punjabi and i'll see you guys in the next one bye bye